Hi, my name is Terry and welcome to my workshop. Today I'm going to be showing you how I'm going to be taking these old bed slats and hopefully turning them into birdhouses. I shall be making three birdhouses from six bed slats. This is the first video that I've made without any background noise. I've had a few comments in the past where people have said they don't want to hear the sound or the noise from the noisy machines, especially the machine that I'm using right now, which is a thicknesser, which is extremely noisy. Hopefully you'll still enjoy the video. So here goes. The machine that I'm using right now is a thicknesser and what this will do is it will make all the pieces of wood exactly the same width um, and will make the surfaces nice and clean for gluing up which you'll see I'm going to do in a second. As you can see I'm running glue along the edges and I shall glue these together and put them in the clamps below and clamp them up for a good three to four hours, if not overnight. When I'm making something like this, I tend to make a few. So as you'll see, I'll clamp up more than just one piece. I'll clamp up at least three or four. The reason for the masking tape is to stop the next planks that I put on top from sticking to each other. So that's what will happen, the glue would stick the wood together and this will prevent that from happening. Hopefully this makes sense what I'm doing. When I put the next piece down you'll see what I mean. It stops the wood sticking to itself or the piece below. Because as you can imagine there will be some glow, some glue rather, that will come out of the joints. And the last thing I want is them all sticking together. As you can see this is not actual speed. I wish I could work this fast. So they're all clamped up nice and tight now, and as I say, I'll leave those for a good few hours, possibly overnight, and then come back to them. You can never really use too many clamps, as you can see. Now for taking them off. Now this is the following day, I did decide to let this glue up overnight. So as you can see the clamps are now off, I'll separate these which will be easy to do because of the tape that's in between, as you can see. And there will be a little bit of glue or a little bit of tape that's stuck to them. I shall simply put those through the planer just one more time and that will get rid of all the glue and make them nice and flat again. Now for the part that I enjoy, and that's cutting out the shapes of the birdhouse. I'll start off by making the front and the back. And as you can see, I've got two pieces of wood together, one on top of the other. So I'll cut both at the same time so they're identical back and front.
These are cut using a square at a standard 45 degrees. And as I said, I cut these at 45 degrees, which is a standard cut on a mitre saw. There's one side. Clamp down the other side so it doesn't move. And that's the other side. That should give me a perfect pitch roof. I'm now marking out the holes for the bird, for the birds rather, for the birds to fly into. The openings will be 35mm, but from the research that I've done, you can make these anywhere between 28mm and 35mm. I found 35mm works for us perfectly here in the UK. I've made a whole number of these bird houses now, and although a lot of the websites recommend 28mm is perfect, I found 35 works so well for us. I've got one of these outside my workshop, and every year it attracts birds for nesting. If you're wondering why I've made two holes at the front of this, that's because I normally try and make two bird houses at the same time. It makes sense. I'm now marking out the sides. You'll probably see I've taken a measurement from the side of the front of the house or the back of the birdhouse and now I'm cutting those. They are also cut at 45 degrees and you'll see why in a second. The most important part, sharpening my pencil. You'll probably see that I've got both pieces of wood that come off the mitre saw. Both are cut rough at this stage. I mark one side, mark out the piece I'm going to cut off, then the other off cut, even though it's miles too big, I'll mark that so that way there's no waste and one mitre gives me two pieces. And now it's time to apply some wood glue and clamp it all together. That's the tricky part. Hopefully you can now see why I've mitered the side pieces. So they're now they're at exactly the same angle as the roof. Once it's clamped up, I tend to wipe the glue off straight away because this glue does dry very, very quickly. And it's much easier to get it off when it's wet. As you can see, while I was waiting for those two to glue up, I'd started on a third one. Um, where I'd already put the roof together and now I've just got to glue the sides. So, I'm now going to start to make the roofs. I will make these slightly larger than the birdhouse itself, and it normally overhangs by about 25mm, so I use a block of wood just to mark that width. And over to the mitre saw to cut those roofs.
Now it's a case of gluing the roof sections together. You'll see I don't run the glue all the way along, I run it in the middle and at each end. What I tend to do is put super glue in between, as you can see here. I then use an accelerator spray, which causes the super glue to dry much quicker. I only need to hold those together for about five seconds, and you will see that will fix, and the wood glue will dry later on, and that will give me a perfect fix. And as you can see, already that's glued. And now I'm making the bottoms. This is really straightforward. Just line it up with the bottom of the birdhouse, mark it with a pencil, take it over to the mitre saw, cut that section out, come back and glue it on. I tend to put a couple of nails in the bottom first of all, and then I'll turn that over and glue it, but I start the nails off first of all. Makes it much easier rather than trying to get the nails in when the house is upside down and it's glued. block of wood in my vice which gives me something to lean against and because the nails are already halfway in it's so much easier I've only just got to bang them in the last little bit So as you can see that's two of the birdhouses almost complete and I've got one more there that's almost complete in clamps. Now it's just a case of giving them a light sand. Now this is a bit of an experiment, I don't normally do this with bird houses, but I wanted to fix the roofs in a way that the screws wouldn't show at the top. The reason for this new type of roof is I've had a few people say to me they'd like to be able to take the roof off so they can clean inside the birdhouse once the birds have flown away at the end of the season. I'm just putting a little bit of wood filler over the tops of the nails at the bottom, it just finishes it off really. This is the way that I would normally fix the roofs onto the birdhouses, and it does leave four holes in the roof, but of course you don't see them because you're looking up at the birdhouse because they're normally mounted quite high on a wall. Hopefully you can see the new way where I've mounted a piece of wood into the roof so when that slots on top that fixes in place as you can see and it's nice and snug. All I now need to do is drill a hole at the front which will be tiny because it will be right in the V of the roof and one at the back and that will have two tiny little screws which makes it really simple to be able to take the roof off as you can see. Doing it this way you don't have any screws showing on the outside of the roof. I'm sure the birds won't mind anyway. Now for a little bit of colour.
Now I'm just giving these a light sanding ready for painting. I don't normally paint birdhouses, I normally coat them with a clear stain. But I'm making these for somebody and they have requested they are painted. So let's see how they turn out. As you can see, I've sped this up quite a bit. I can't paint this fast, honestly. Now some of you will be looking at this and thinking, what is he doing? This is nothing to do with making a birdhouse, and you're right. What I've done is taken a piece of scrap wood and put the four nails through it. You'll see in a second that I will turn this over and it will have four sharp points, and that will act as a stand. So when the birdhouse is painted and it's wet, I can stand it on top of the four nails and it won't touch the workbench. Hopefully this now makes sense. And now on to painting the roofs. What you will notice is that I don't paint the inside of these roofs. I really don't like the idea of there being any paint on the inside where the birds are going to live. Now that's more painted, and this might be a little bit over the top, but they've all had four coats. That will keep them nice and protected against the weather. So as you can see, I'm just putting them all back together again. This is the little roof trick that I was trying to achieve earlier on, as you can see, and I think it's worked quite nicely. I much prefer that look rather than the four holes in the roof like there is on the two at the front. Not sure what you think. And there we have three completed birdhouses. Hope you enjoyed watching. I certainly enjoyed making them. They were good fun. I really enjoyed making these. I um, hope you liked the video. If you did, please subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching. Bye now.